Pat here from AIS. Uh, gonna do a little video to get you acquainted with your new equipment that you've just purchased. These are all the parts that you're gonna get with your machine. We supply you with a maintenance package. We give you a complete uh, gathering of all the information that came with the parts that made up your machine. Once you get your machine out of the crate, you get it up onto your workbench or work stand, whatever, wherever you're gonna be uh, using it at. Should be something fairly sturdy, by the way. We do have a vibratory bowl, and uh, so something sturdier, the sturdier the better, as the old saying goes. This machine does require uh, an air hookup that uses uh, 65 PSI on this particular machine. It should be labeled right on the regulator for your particular equipment. It does come with a power cord. It just plugs into the, the one side of the control box here. When we ship it to you, you probably notice when you pull it out of the crate, there is a gap here between the discharge chute of the bowl and the magazine. And we do that so that way damage doesn't occur during shipping. Now there's a single bolt in the center of the bowl. It requires a 3 8 Allen wrench. Uh, you can use it, uh, the Allen wrench we supply with you in your maintenance kit or just one that you have on hand. But uh, you crack the, uh, the bolt loose and then you spin this and there should be a setup sheet with your equipment. But as a general rule of thumb, whatever the cross section is on your ring, your O-ring that's gonna be running in this machine, that's generally about the, what the gap is between the discharge chute and the magazine. Now there is a little bit of hole slop in this bowl, so you can slide it back and forth to get your alignment so that the O-rings flow freely from the discharge on into your magazine. You can usually kind of like sight down behind the, uh, uh, down through this way to make sure you're pretty, pretty good alignment. You wanna put a decent snug on that, that bolt just to make sure it doesn't vibrate loose. Now we've got our uh, power switch over on the left side here. You just flip that up. You've got an indicator and should be your bowl should come on right away. If it doesn't, uh, you have a, a switch. This is a little bit later model here. The newer models have a separate box with the amplitude controller and there is a power switch on it. Make sure that power switch is on um, or if it's down to zero on the bowl amplitude, it won't vibrate. So uh, you will have a setting, a recommended setting in your setting sheet for this. Now you should be supplied with a, uh, an e-manual. And right now I'm putting the O-rings in that this head is designed to run. You can turn the amplitude up a little higher just to bring those O-rings up so that they'll start feeding into your track. In the meantime, I'm gonna get the mandrel out. We tend to like to keep it in this little case. It protects it if it's not in the machine insert it into your stripper jaws and up on top of the control box there is uh, what's called a manual cycle switch it's labeled it's a little button and as you press it it'll go over one cycle and that pulses the lube and what you're looking for is to do it until you get a drop of lube onto your mandrel so we'll do this a few times sometimes in shipping you lose a little bit of oil on the end of the nozzle so you have to prime it up a little bit once you receive a drop of oil on there, just spread it around a little bit, place it back into the, uh, into the head. You give it a push and you can see it brought an O-ring out with it. And our O-rings are just about to the top here. And typically once you get it up to the top, you can slow it up to the recommended setting. And you're looking for the stack to end up somewhere in this area. You don't want it to shut off when it's past the top. So you're looking for at least three quarters of an inch down from the top. Um, anywhere in this area would be fine. So we're ready to start running now. You just present your part, give it a push, and it brings out another ring. This particular model has O-ring detection, so it'll let you know if it comes up empty. If you're not paying attention, uh, it'll tell you that your bowl is low and uh, it's time to refill. To reset it, simply shut it on and back off, and uh, you refill your, your lubricant in the back. If it happens to be low, just refill it. Some models have a low lube sensor on the reservoir and it will shut down the machine and prevent you from physically cycling it. Uh, to reset this, you just simply put your lube in and it'll reset automatically and you'll be allowed to run again. And this should get you going.